So there you are. My men and I found your clues and followed them straight here. We found Mao in a tent at the campsite unconscious. It seems he'll be okay. Sadly, we found no trace of the other three. Uh, young Kun, what, what is... Nothing. Pay it no mind. Those three miners are over there, in that cave. Cave? W what happened? They're exhausted, but not in danger. Don't worry. Uh, right. Well, thank you, all of you. I better go and see how they're doing. So you're taking them back to Liyue Harbor? That's right. Can I come with you? No problem. You rescued my men. I'll be happy to assist all of you in any way I can. I'll be back soon. I need to assess their condition. Kunjun! Oh, uh, uh, we should be calling you Ezda. You're coming back to Liyue Harbor too, right? Not I. Merely this body. Once I'm gone, the true owner will accompany the miners back to Liyue. Kunjun hails from a family of famous artisans. He too will be famous in time. It would be a shame for someone of his talent to go missing. You always did have a great admiration for blacksmiths. Curious how swords and daggers are blind, yet their creators see so much. Perhaps empathy is mankind's proudest achievement after all. Ejdaha, I am no longer the Geo Archon. I can sense it. Today I am just an ordinary citizen of Liu. Even you met such a fate. <sighs> Let's get the difficult part out of the way. I cannot guarantee that I won't be awoken a second time. No matter. If that day comes to pass, Liu must prepare itself to face you. And how will Liu fare without Rex Lapis? Even without a god above, this remains a nation of men. I was once their god. I ought to be here to witness their rise and fall. All life is shaped and then ground away by the endless flow of time. You were always the strongest among us. Yet, it would seem that even you have been eroded. That's unimportant. Fate is ordained by heaven. Even if our mission had already concluded, it would be cowardly not to strike out on the road of departure. You may live forever, doomed to a lonely existence, yet even this is temporary. When you reach the end of time, those people, those past and future relationships predetermined by fate, they will be waiting for you. I do not pretend to match your rhetoric when it comes to the subject of a life long lived. I fear that the life of an elemental being is longer than any in this world. Were it not so, you would have killed me long ago, and would not be having to face me again now. You've brought a smile to my face. When all is said and done, a reunion between old friends is an auspicious occasion. That day in the chasm... Did you hesitate? A heart of stone is a heart nonetheless. But I am the god of contracts, and was for a time a god of the people of Liyue. You chose justice, but did not forsake your kindness. You came to me not as an assassin, and so I was willingly sealed away. The movements of the Earth Dragon can tremble the Earth and shake the heavens. With your abilities, even at my full strength, I struggle to confront you. Let alone seal you away. Hence my inception. Do not forget that I was there with Liwa's founder. The face may have changed, but the content of the contract remains intact. Old friend, 
God of contracts. I hereby honor our agreement. <sighs> Thank you, Ishtaha. My life is at an end. I will join the eternal flow of time. And you, Morax, you will live for many a day to come. <sighs> You're leaving? If it is fated, Morax, we will meet again. Huh? Yes. Don't be alarmed. He's only asleep. Whoa. That was so weird. It was like he suddenly became another person. In fact, we have yet to meet the real... He was. Centuries may have passed since then. But events from a thousand years ago remain crystal clear in my mind. In our last tale, Rex Lapis was walking alone in the mountains. He heard a remote voice, unlike any other, coming from a crack in the earth. Most of the ancient Geo life forms that live below Liyue are blind, having not seen the sunlight for an age. The voice was sometimes sad and song-like. Other times it was loud and thunderous. The Lord of Geo searched here and there before finally unearthing a strange stone from the bedrock. That's how Ejdahal was. I answered his wish and took him above ground. The Lord of Geo took pity on the rock spirit and carved it into a magnificent work of craftsmanship, a vivid representation of a dragon. I bestowed him with a pair of eyes to see the world and came to an agreement with him. With his fingers, he made two eyes, quicker than words could tell. Lightning flashed and thunder roared, and a living, breathing dragon soared into the clouds. I agreed to let him live among the people above ground. But if the day ever came when he brought ruin to order, he would once again be sealed in the dark. The dragon accompanied the Lord of Geo, fighting campaigns alongside him in the four corners of the world. We have a saying to eulogize these events. The crash of a spear brought billowing dust. The mountains and waters made way at the sound. The sight of a dragon bestowed with a touch the promise of rainwater blessing the ground. thousand years ago, Ejdaha attacked the chasm. I tried to obstruct him, fighting him tooth and nail down the length and breadth of the mine. Finally, I brought him down and sealed him underground. During that battle, Dragonfall was born. Ejdaha could sense the stone. Subconsciously, he wanted to use it to find me. Despite being the victor, I could not claim to be stronger than he, and in his heart, he still retained an ounce of goodwill towards me, towards Leo, towards life above ground. He was willing to be sealed away, but as the erosion set in, he forgot. Even I cannot avoid it, but there is something I understand better than most. When the door opens, it is time to leave. The greater the power, the greater the danger erosion may bring about. The millennia may come and go, but even a stone may tire. Personally sealing away an old friend. This is just one form of erosion I have endured. People abandon and surrender the things they love to pursue the right path. 
Perhaps this is the erosion imposed on me by the natural order of this world. But I was a god of mankind. My identity may change, but my eyes will bear witness to the history of humanity. You still care a lot about Liyue. Call it... <sighs> part of my duty. I must thank you both. No worries! Oh? About what? Oh, yeah! Paimon nearly forgot! So, not long ago, we met a guy called Dane. He told us about Conria and the punishment of the gods. That's when we realized that those events were connected to the person we're searching for. Xiang Li, you're a god. You've lived through thousands of years of history. Surely you experienced the incident? Hmm. Uh, I cannot say. Why? You can't even give us a thread of information? This is so important to us. I understand. But I must apologize. This is my contract. You mean another past grievance? Like the incident with Ejda? Too painful to talk about? It was signed before it all began. I have always honored the contract. And kept my silence. How can you be like that? You two are friends to me. I can assure it brings me no pleasure to disappoint you. But as the god of contracts, I cannot go back on my word. Would you be ready to find out? It appears your understanding of this world continues to grow. There are many events of ages past. Many secrets that lie hidden. They have been eroded by time. Forgotten by the people. Abandoned. But you are capable of finding them and bringing them into the light. Those who come to witness will witness. Those who are born to remember will remember. If you take the same road as that person, there may be more difficulties ahead. But as long as you firmly believe that you are on the right path, everything has meaning.